Our next, next speaker is Professor Alexander Kolmatsky. He's from Belarus State University of Minsk. He will speak about the Lushmar experiments in our dating system and physical interpretation of the results. First of all, I'd like to thank as an organizer of this conference for the invitation and for the opportunity to present this talk. And here you will see its title and the author team. So, it's known that the first series of Mosbau experiments in rotating system had been carried out soon after the discovery of Mosbau effect in the 20th century. Here you see the reference case. Uh, the goal of this experiment was to uh, check the relativistic duration of time in laboratory conditions for resonant absorber orbiting uh, a resonant source. Uh, according to uh, relativistic prediction, time duration effect must induce the relative energy shift between uh, the emission and absorption line at the value defined by equation 1, where coefficient k is equal to 0 0.5 according to special relativity. Uh, all of the author of this experiment actually reported the confirmation of this relativistic pre prediction. At the same time, in the whole series of such experiments, only the experiment by Kudik, here is the reference, uh, could be considered as reliable due to its capability to directly measure the position of resonant line on the energy scale versus the tangential velocity, whereas the results of other old experiments could be distorted by vibrations which are always present in the rotor system. New wave of interest to Osbauer experiments in the rotor system emerged after the prediction by Professor Yarman, you see the difference, that the coefficient k and the expression for the relative energy shift should be larger than zero point and in the particular configuration where the source is at rest and absorber rotates, he derived k equal to 1. In order to verify these results, we first of all looked closer at the experiment by Kildic, where we found computational error in the data processing and provided the correct estimation of the result of his experiment equation 2. Uh, this estimation <coughs> anyway substantially disagrees with the classical relativistic prediction, and due to this reason, it attracted considerable attention of the scientific community, indicating the need to carry out luminous power experiments in a rotating system. In the general formulation, the goal of such new experiment is the measurement of the coefficient k in equation 1 and preparing our experiment with having one in mind three different results k equals 0 0.5 special relativity k equals 0 0.6 the experiment by Kildi and k equal to unity uh, Yarman. Surprisingly for us, in our experiments we obtained the value which nobody expected. K equal to 2 divided by 3 and the particular results of this experiments are shown here. Minsk 2008 and Istanbul 2014. There are corresponding preferences. Uh, so, uh, this result requires its explanation uh, and due to uh, past years there was several attempt to explain it uh, where for convenience uh, 
deviation, deviation of coefficient k from a relativistic prediction k, uh, 1 divided by 2 was named as the extra energy shift equation 3. And below we will consider various attempts to explain the origin of the extra energy shift in the chronological order. Here you see a scheme of various attempts uh, the, uh, 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 extra energy shift, first of all, uh, was uh, 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 considered in generalized relativity by Professor Friedman, Yard gravitation theory and general relativity. In its turn, in general relativity, they were used several approaches, which will be shortly commented below. So the generalized special relativity by Friedman is based on the negation of the clock hypothesis by Einstein. That is the independence of uh, rate of clock of on it acceleration. In contrast, uh, uh, Friedman and all assume the presence of uh, the universal maximum acceleration in nature and derive the corresponding transformation between accelerated frames. And the authors also pointed out that the power experiments in rotating system represent a very convenient tool for test of their hypothesis due to two reasons. A high sensitivity of Nussbauer effect to the relative energy shift of resonance line and a huge centrifugal acceleration in this experiment which cannot be achieved in any kind kinds of accelerators. Thanks to these features, the Nussbauer rotor experiments become much more sensitive to the assumed existence of maximum acceleration than any experiments in particle physics uh, with any kind of accelerators. Thus, Friedman and all conjectures that the presence of maximum acceleration can explain the origin of the extra energy shift in order to verify the hypothesis they derived equation 4, which yield uh, the equation 6 for the coefficient k. At the values of k near 0 0.6 to 0 0.7, the estimated value of maximum acceleration is 10 to minus 19 meter per second square. At the same time, one can see that coefficient scar depends on rotor radius r. Uh, however, in our experiments in Minsk 2008 and in our experiment in Istanbul 2014, we used quite different values of r, but nevertheless obtained the same value of k 2 divided by 3. In this situation, Freeman it all claimed, without any convincing argumentation, that the results of our experiment are allegedly incorrect, <coughs> and they decided to carry out their own experiments for the measurement of Nussbauer effect in the rotating system, using the synchrotron source of resonant radiation in the European synchrotron radiation facility in Grenoble. However, this way they faced with huge technical difficulties uh, and as a result they did not come to any definite conclusion in their publications shown here. Uh, moreover, we found some non-accounting systematic errors in their experiments indicated in this reference. Uh, and recently Friedman et al. indeed recognized that the experimental approach should be much improved. Meantime, Professor Walter Kotzel from Munich Technical University has found via the temperature dependence of the power effect in crystals that the minimum value of maximum acceleration, if it exists, should be larger than 10 in, 10 in 21 power meters per 
second in square. If so, the extra energy shift becomes less than 10 in minus 3, which might far beyond any measurement capability of all known with power water experiment. Thus, we conclude that generalized relativity by Friedman et al. is failing to explain the experimental results divided by Friedman. Next, we consider the explanation of the equality k equal to 2 by 3 in Yard theory. I recall that the root postulate of Yard theory is written in form of equation 7, where EB is a static binding, binding binding energy defined by the work done to the object in order to bring it by the static because it's practically from infinity to the given location. This equation states that the rest mass of the object as a, uh, is not a constant value, but rather altered within the gravitation environment by the value EP e by C square only to the law of energy conservation. Further, due to the general quantum mechanical relationship between quantum mass, energy, frequency, time, and size, the variation of the rest mass of the test particle uh, affects the time rate of the particle and dictates a corresponding transformation of spatial interval in the presence of gravity. So, uh, what, thus, like in general relativity, gravity the metric of space-time in Yard theory. I don't have time to speak more about Yard theory. I only mention that uh, Yard theory is fully this with the Einstein equivalence principle. And uh, uh, it is the first successful non-metric theory which combines the metric and dynamical approaches in the description of gravity and provides a successful explanation of all experimental parts collected to the moment in space-time physics, including the Mesbauer water experiment. In order to present a young explanation of this experiment, first of all, we write an expression for violent energy of particle on the rotor equation A, which uh, leads to the following uh, metric expressions in rotating frame and the corresponding quantities in the laboratory frame defined by equation 10. Then we explicitly take into account the fact that uh, resonant nucleus represent a quantum particle in a crystal cell, uh, and therefore, in order to determine its, its uh, energy level, one has to solve the Dirac equations for particle in the box, which, in the case of this power water experiment, uh, can be, uh, we can use uh, Schrodinger equation in the low relativistic, low velocity relativistic limit, its solution is given by equation 11 and at equal cell parameters, we further obtain equation 12 for the energy of resonant nucleus, which directly yield equation 14. This result of Yard theory perfectly coincides with the measurement data, and I'd like to stress two essential features in its derivation. First of all, the explicit use of fact that resonant nucleus is a quantum system, uh, which is a very attractive physical viewpoint for Ms. Bauer in analysis of Ms. Bauer experiment. And second one, metric of rotating disk in Young theory differs from metric of rotating disk in general relativity. So let us go further. Uh, and uh, uh, perhaps consider uh, some attempt to explain this power rotor experiments in general relativity. Uh, the first such attempt has been made by Christian Korda, who introduced <coughs> this, this, this 
so-called synchronization effect. Uh, his basic, basic claim is that the clock in the origin of the rotating system and the laboratory clock attached to the detector must be synchronized before determining the coefficient k. Uh, in his analysis, he used the uh, Langevin metric for rotating system with the following transformation uh, between resting and rotating frame. Then Porta uh, uh, said, uh, argued that uh, in the case of this power experiment, the velocity of the detector as seen in rotating frame is much smaller than light velocity. Therefore, we can use uh, approxim some approximation of Langevin metric uh, cell T, and hence I use an expression for uh, azimuthal angle as seen in rotating frame for propagating uh, light. We derive equation 90, which finally, according to Porter, yields to some synchronization effect with further the derivation of k equal to 2 divided by 3. However, in our subsequent paper, we argue that this synchronization effect, even if it exists, is totally unmetical in with our rotor experiments, and thus it anyway cannot contribute to the, to the measured value of coefficient k. However, persistent by Christian Porter in this question uh, forces us to look uh, more closer at his mathematical side of his analysis and to find uh, computational error in his approach. So first of all, uh, the first error is the use of an approximate expression for Langevin metrics, whereas in this bar rotor experiments, we deal with the energy shift of the order C minus 2. And therefore, we must use the complete expression for large matrix. And the second error is the use of wrong side, uh, wrong side for isometric angle for propagating radiation, because in laboratory frame, isometric angle is constant for laboratory absorber light propagated along a straight line, and therefore the side minus is missing by Porter. Next, combining these equations, we derive that dt is equal to dt, equation 12, which shows uh, uh, that the rate of clock in the origin of rotating system and the rate of a laboratory clock attached to the detector are identical to each other at any value of the uh, angular velocity of rotor. This result is well understandable from a physical viewpoint because the point center of the rotor has a zero conventional velocity at any value of angular velocity. Therefore, both flow on the rotational axis and in the laboratory remain synchronized to each other at any rotational frequency so that the synchronization effect by Porter completely disappears. <laughs> Next attempt was uh, made by Benedito and Fiori with the idea of so-called time-dependent Doppler <coughs> effect. The idea, idea is based on the assumption that the interaction of resonant gamma quantum with resonant nucleus happens during a finite time interval where the velocity of orbiting nucleus has time to rotate at a finite angle and as a result it aspires to zero component on the direction of propagation of gamma radiation. If so, then some contribution to the linear <coughs> Doppler effect uh, should emerge and this effect, according to this author, is able to explain the origin of the extra energy shift. Thus, according to this author, the time of interaction of resonant radiation with resonant nucleus should be equal to the love time of the excited resonant nucleus. This idea, however, strongly contradicts the common picture 
where the interaction of resonant influence with gamma radiation is divided into three different stages, where the light type characterizes that excited nucleus only, which exists between practical instantaneous moment of the absorption and emission of resonant quantum. At the same time, we can ask, maybe Benedita and Chloe are right, maybe a standard picture is incorrect, and maybe they are right. All depends on numerical estimations, of course. In particular, one can show that the model by Benedetta and Fioli gives equation 21, where tau is a lifetime of excited nucleus dependent on its uh, <coughs> width of line. In the estimation of width of line, Benedetta and Fioli use the experiment <coughs> by Friedman where uh, the line was drastically distorted by vibrations. <laughs> and as a result, they obtained wrong estimation to tau equal to one nanosecond, uh, which seemingly uh, leads to agreement of measurement, uh, to uh, agreement with the model. However, it's obvious that lifetime of nucleus does not depend on any vibration in the system, and in particular, it is well known that the lifetime of the excited level of iron 57 is equal to 96 nanoseconds. Uh, <laughs> substituting this value into equation 21, we see disagreement between left hand side and right hand side by two orders of magnitude. This means that the idea of the mediation theory is totally wrong. Next, we we'll consider remaining attempt of general relativity to exploit this experiment. Desynchronization effect by Rio 1 and Benedetta, <coughs> geometrical approach by Padosinov et al., and corrected synchronization effect by Christian Korte. All these uh, approaches has, have two common features. First, the use of large wind metrics, 23. And the use of constraint that azimuthal angle in rotating system for propagating gamma quantum is the constant value. Then they obtained equation 26 for time of propagating of uh, light from source to absorber in the food, where uh, which oh, sorry which is larger than R divided by C and contains some contribution D tau, which is responsible for desynchronization effect, synchronization effect, and so on. At the same time, it's easy to understand the physical meaning of D tau. Indeed, the constraint phi prime is constant, means that the uh, gamma quanta propagate along in the radial direction of rotating system. And therefore, <laughs> they propagate not along the straight line in web rotating system. <laughs> this is possible only in the case if we use some wide of resonant gamma quanta, uh, connected resonant source and resonant absorber, and uh, fix it on, on rotor. However, such widest bonnet applied in all known experiments uh, on this subject, and moreover, such widest are even not invented. Thus, we have to replace the, this constraint by normal constraint, that is, as we know, and the constant in for a laboratory observer, uh, and uh, then we get uh, the usual picture where synchronization effect totally disappears. Finally, some conclusions. Among several attempts to explain the origin of extra energy shift between emission and absorption resonant light in a rotating system, revealed first via the reanalysis of the experiment by Kredit and then confirmed in our model experiments only the explanation of Yard theory provides quantitative agreement between calculated and measured results. Second, 
the available attempts to understand the origin of the extra energy shift in general relativity remain unsuccessful to the moment, which allows us to assume that any reason, reasonable general relativistic explanation of extra energy shift does not exist. If so, the Mesmore experiment in an rotating system acquire a very fundamental significance for modern science, and we hope that in the near future they will attract even more attention of the scientific community. Finally, this is a list of our publication on the subject. Thank you for your attention. Bravo, Sasha. Questions, comments? Thank you again.